Hey guys, it's Tiny Tom Logan back with another video for you and today I'm here to show you, review, try not to blow up the Asus ROG Thor 2, Platinum 2. Let's say it in the way that they want me to say it. The ROG Thor 1000 Watt Platinum 2. So, I have a new Asus power supply uh, which I will show you all the nitty gritty in a minute. But Platinum rating, 1000 watts capable and uh, the price tag comes in around at scan the 300 pound mark one of the reasons why i thought this was a good time for us to take a look at this this has not been sent in as a review item this is actually here for a project you guys may see within the next few weeks but while i had it uh, in house i thought i may as well strap it to the big load tester so that we can uh, see if it's any good underneath the hood and one of the reasons for that is i've just had the new 2022 uh, hxi 1000 power supply in now that came in around the 200 pound mark so the rog one comes in a hundred pound more around the 300 pound mark so that will be good for us to be able to see uh, if there's any performance differences or if it's just what's inside the box. But talking of what's inside the box, I suppose I'd better show you, hadn't I? Now we have all of the cables out already, which makes things a little bit more difficult for us. But this is what I have to do uh, with the power supplies every time I test them. I have to get everything out, get everything connected. Now the Thor comes with a mix of braided hoses and then flat black plastic coated. Basically, your eight pin um, CPU connector, or the four plus four or the eight pin, however you want to put it, the PCI Express and the uh, 24 pin, are all individually black braided hoses. And I believe by looking at some of the accessories inside the box, they've been done by cable mod as well. Uh, the other ones, so the SATA and the Molex cables are uh, the flat black plastic and it does come with a flat black plastic um, addressable RGB connector in the box as well. And then the only other cable that it comes with which breaks the trend is this one. Now there's two 8-pin PCI Expresses on the end and then on the other end there is a 12 pin Nvidia cable this does come in the box this is an early model so it comes with a 12 pin if you get one with a 12 pin you can contact Asus and they will send you a 16 pin so that you're PCI Express compatible other things that come in the box ROG badge which is obviously all lovely then you get some rog velcro ties these are actually really good velcro ties as well i've used them a lot in the past comes with some cable combs which is nice from cable mod and it also does come with a cable mod um, uh, voucher code now i would normally show you the voucher code on the back of this but I sadly need to make sure this goes with something else that you'll see later on. So I can't give it away. Normally I would just show you the code and somebody can have it at home. Um, and then you just get your, your manual. Other than that, the power supply itself. And it does actually look really quite nice. Now I have taken lots of other pictures, but there is a screen down here which you're going to be able to see in a moment showing you the wattage that it's pulling and we can double check it on the actual unit itself. This section uh, lights up here as does the ROG eye and a band up here which will come on automatically or you can control it by adding in the um, RGB controller cable. And that just needs to go into an addressable RGB header on your motherboard or however you, else you would normally control it. On the top, you can see this lovely uh, aluminium brushed section. I actually really like this. Normally with a power supply, I'm a fan down guy, hide it away. This actually is so nice, I would genuinely want to show it off. Uh, it's almost a shame to hide that underneath the power supply cover as well, if I'm completely honest. Um, the other thing I do need to show you is around the back of the power supply, there is 
a button for a uh, non-passive mode. So what you can do is you can have it switched on if you want it to be semi-passive. Effectively then the fan will go into zero DBA mode which basically means it goes off until it's needed or you can flick the switch and it will stay slightly on all the time. In complete honesty the power supply is more than capable of knowing when it wants the fan to be on so I would always have it in the zero DBA mode. Um, other than that there's not a great deal for us to talk about other than if you were to put it face down you're kind of missing all the party tricks because there's not a lot going on and you're going to kind of miss that which I would assume is going to be the point that most of you would want to watch. Now I'm going to turn the, let's see if we can get it on a nice angle because I'm going to turn the power supply tester on and it also means that you can watch the light up sequence on the unit. There we go. So you're going to hear some noise in the background because the power supply tester isn't quiet. And then what I will do is flick the on, 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 on. There we go. So there you go, you can see the screen starting on the left hand side. Now because that screen is animated, I think they've missed a trick because you can only have it showing that wattage and that is how much it's drawing at the moment as well. So if I was to flick my tester across, you can see it says 122 on my tester. The number that we need to be looking at is this one. So this is how much it's delivering to the power supply tester. This is how much it's pulling from the wall. So 121.4, you can see that's flicking between 121 and 122. So the amount of power from the wall, it's actually quite accurate. Um, but as I said, this screen you've seen is actually quite nice. Uh, and I think it would have been nice if you could have put your own messages, GIFs, and all of that there as well, rather than it just being that wattage. Also, I think it would have been nice if it was a, you would, could choose between power that was actually being delivered and the power that was being pulled from the wall. And I don't think there's any reason why it couldn't show the efficiency either, because this number here is the efficiency. This looks low because we're only pulling 100 watts, which is obviously uh, 10%. But if we were to flick it up to 20%, 200 watts straight away you can see it's jumped up to 89 but it's most efficient at 50% uh, so you can see here it's put delivering 500 watts that means it's pulling 543 watts from the wall and you can see here it's 92 point something uh, efficient now weirdly this power supply gets more efficient the longer that it's on uh, it's something that I haven't seen so badly before but for argument's sake if I go back down to 20% it says here 89.2 uh, if we leave it long enough it can and will go up to almost 90 uh, and it's something I found very strange I've never noticed it on another power supply in the past but it can go all the way up to uh, 90 90.1 percent efficiency and it seems to do it the longer you leave it on same with 50 percent there or thereabouts as it seems to warm up and the circuits have the electricity flowing through them a little bit it seems to get more efficient i don't know why i've definitely never seen this uh, so badly in the past but what we will do is um, start looking at the testing now we're recording in 4k and you've all got relatively good screens at home I would assume so I'm not going to zoom you into the ripple at the top like I used to we'll just get and chat about it so 20% uh, as you can see here because it's been running a little while I showed you it was 89.2 it's now already up to 89.45 it will go up to 89 uh, even into the 90s um, but I took a result of 89.6 
I also took an average of 13.2 on the ripple up here. You will see it a little bit above, you will see it a little bit below, but we take the average um, uh, across the course of the testing. You can also see uh, that the wattage on the side of the power supply itself is fairly accurate with what is being drawn from the wall. Um, we're about uh, a wattage and a half out, but for something like this, it's really not essentially uh, important. When we go up to 50%, and I will show you graphs for these all as well, so that you can see the comparison. Um, 50%, 90.6 I took. This will creep up over time as well. Um, so you can see we're 90.4, 90.5 now, but within a few minutes of it running, it's at 90.7, 90.8. So we took an average across the board of 90.6 with a 10.6 on the ripple up here as well. Again, you'll see 10.4, you'll see 10, you'll see it flicking into 11s. I've never seen the point of just telling you the worst or the best case scenario because um, it doesn't fluctuate that much. So we've just gone with an average. Then with a simple flick of a switch, as you can see here, a thousand watt being delivered into the power supply tester. And that means 1,094 basically watts being pulled from the wall. Over here, you can see 1,095, 1,094. It flicks around a little bit. At this wattage though, at 100%, you can see we are 91.8, 91.7-ish. Um, it's more often than not 91.7, flicks between. Uh, and one of the things I will say is uh, we did leave this one running for quite a while the other day. This doesn't seem to creep up with the efficiency like the other ones did. Don't know why. But up here, you can see that you've got 16, 16.6, 16.4. You will occasionally see a spike to 17 as well, which is why we took an average of 16.6 on the efficiency. Now, if I stop punishing the power supply and fade it back down to 20%, you can see that we're already at 89.7. So you can see what I said to you about this working its way up the efficiency scale. Now, I have recently tested that HXI power supply. So we can do some direct comparisons. In that, at 20%, the uh, Corsair was more efficient because that came in at 92%. Uh, and just 11.6 on the ripple. But as we scale up, the, they were very close with efficiency at 50%, but the ASUS definitely won out with ripple at just 10.6 millivolts of ripple. So it's, it's almost two and a half millivolts less than the Corsair. And then when you move up to 100%, the ASUS was both more efficient and less ripple. So there was 1% more efficiency and a good three millivolts less on the ripple if you compare them like for like with exactly the same settings on the tester. I think that's a really nice way to look at them. So we will turn the noisy power supply tester off. And uh, it's been quite nice to look at the power supplies quite closely together plugged in on the uh, tester within the same week and effectively there is a 30% price difference. Now one of the things I will say with the uh, Corsair and I don't know whether ACES are going to want me talking about them so closely like this, I don't really care because it wasn't sent as a review sample anyway. Um, so uh, direct, direct comparison, the Corsair is better, it's more efficient and less ripple at the lower wattages but the moment you get up into the 50 and the thousand watts the ASUS quite clearly pulls in front. Is it enough to give a uh, hundred pounds extra on the price tag? Probably not. Uh, this doesn't have any software support like the ASUS does, uh, sorry like the Corsair does, doesn't have the link to IQ, you can't change fan profiles, um, but does have all the lovely shiny uh, lights and stuff. The case looks better and it does come with braided cables. It does come with cable combs. It comes with extra bits and bobs in the box and it does come with PCI Express 5 support. Even though my one just come with the Nvidia one, you can get a PCI Express 5 cable. So it's more future proof. They have the same amount of warranty, which is 10 years. They are both platinum. They both come in around 
the, the requirements as well, although the efficiency on the Asus was actually better the more you pushed it. So I would say that the Asus one is a slightly more high-end power supply in that it gets more efficient and less ripple the more you use it. So if you've got a very, very high-end system, if you wanted to pick between them and forget about the prices, the Thor is actually better. But if you're one of those users that's over-specking your power supply, <coughs> and you're actually only going to be using about five or 600 watts, then technically you might be better off saving money and buying the Corsair. So it's horses for courses. Although, I will say though, that when it comes to this power supply, you probably are going to be investing heavily into the Asus ecosystem anyway, and at least you know that you're not just getting a badly rebranded, meh power supply that just works. It's actually a very strong unit, looks nice, uh, everything kind of ticks boxes, but it does come with that air of Asus tax. Um, I'm not sure what your 20% uh, off cable mod cables is going to save you, but uh, you know, cables aren't exactly the cheapest things in the world, but then it does come with them in the box. It's not necessarily something that, you know, but you might want a set of red, white, and uh, grey ones like uh, I would probably end up going and buying, and it could save you a few quid further down the line. Is worth remembering about PCI Express 5 future proofing though does come out the box and it means you haven't got to use those awful uh, Nvidia adapter cables which are just ugh, whoever designed those oh no so yes it's very expensive but it does what it should do and a bit more and if you look at pure performance alone it actually does manage to put a uh, HXI new Corsair power supply in the shade a little bit as well. So I will leave that with you. It has been another power supply review. I haven't done uh, many for a, a, a long time. Although to be fair, I haven't done many videos at all for a long time. Finding my feet, uh, maybe we need a uh, subscribers video in the not too distant future. Um, today we are gonna have internet ham and cheese croissants in the comments just because random is good. And this has been Tony Tom Logan with another video for you out. Ding! Love you, sis.